is Watchmen, but if you wanted to go to the website, smallcollegeathletics.com, I think it's under the more button, you can see the video. And just like video on our own campuses, sometimes it works great and sometimes it doesn't, but we got our guys from Blue Frame Technology that we owe a lot of uh, appreciation to. They, they were the ones who, who said, yes, we will come and bring our equipment and uh, live broadcast this, so I don't, I'm hopeful that there are lots of people in the world taking in a free session. In an effort to keep us on schedule, we're going to move right ahead, and this is the second time that I've asked, uh, now I, I will be honest, I did not ask Matt if we could live broadcast this presentation, <laughs> I just decided to do it because Matt is one of my really good friends in the business. He's one of those guys on my 30 minute drive home each day that I reach out to often. And there are actually quite a few of, of you in this room who fit in that category. But Matt um, started at Delta State University and he has really over the years built a dynamic uh, uh, and sustainable source of revenue through sponsorships in their athletic department. So I couldn't think of anyone better to come and share with you what he does than Matt Jones. Let's give Matt a nice welcome. I don't like microphones for a number of reasons. Uh, normally I have one in front of my face most of the time. So can you hear me in the back without this? I want to make sure I got the corner back there because they were the ones. Are, all right, good. I don't want to use that if that's all right. Uh, my name is Matt Jones. I'm a Senior Associate Athletic Director at Delta State. Uh, in my 17th year now with the Statesman and the Lady Statesman and the Okra. We're going to talk about the, the Okra here in just a minute. But uh, really excited to be with you today to talk about sponsorships. Uh, I'm really going to echo some of the things that, that uh, Devin shared with us a little while ago as we kind of dive into trying to create a program that is going to sustain your revenue sources over the long haul. Uh, I think oftentimes at the small college level, uh, as Jim said that we began this morning, we get in uh, our pants are on fire mode to find money almost. And that's not a really good way to operate. One, you're going to get burned. Two, eventually your pants burn up. And uh, that's not real good for you being out in the community. So uh, I want to start with a question today. Who's responsible for the revenue generation on your campus? Put your hand up. Actually, everyone in this room should have put their hand up because everybody in your department is responsible in some shape or form for revenue generation. Now, you may have somebody that is the point person, uh, but kind of going along what Jim shared earlier this morning, it is tremendously important that your coaches, staff, your student athletes understand that they're a part of the engine, uh, and hopefully that engine is burning and running uh, very effectively. Uh, to begin, I want to give us a little snapshot of kind of where Delta State is and what Delta State is. Delta State's an NCAA Division II institution. We're located in Cleveland, Mississippi. Uh, we have right at 3,900 students somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, really a, a, a rich tradition, rich history. Not quite to the 66 national championship level that OKC is at yet, but uh, maybe one day we'll get there. Uh, a little bit about where we're from and why this is important. We're located in the heart of the Mississippi Delta. The Mississippi Delta is the home of the blues. The blues uh, arguably is the beginnings of our rock and roll music. The Beatles and uh, countless rock and roll stars have spent time in the Delta. Uh, this is all Chamber of Commerce stuff. Uh, again, we have a Grammy Museum in Cleveland, uh, Bologna Performing Arts Center. Uh, exceptional dining and shopping. Agriculture is still our number one uh, industry. That's the pretty picture. The, the other side of it is that we're, our area is often referred to as America's third world. Uh, it's the poorest region in the United States of America. And that's not necessarily one of those things that we run out there as a banner and, and wave and flag, you know, the, the, because that's not what you know, we're looking for. Our university serves a population that uh, is underserved, and our job is to try to help educate that region. And so I start with this because you have to know this before you can get the revenue engine going the way you want it to go. You've got to know who you are and know your why. 
uh, I preach constantly. I'm a sociologist by, by education, and I still teach sociology at the university. Uh, it's, it's my rest. Uh, I, I get out of the athletic world by getting into the classroom every day, and it really helps me to kind of refocus my brain a little bit. But understanding what your university is, who it serves, uh, and its core tenets help you when you go out into the sponsorship realm. So let's get into that a little bit. Uh, we operate our umbrella under the Statesman Sports Properties. Uh, I have a, a team of uh, three assistants. Uh, we're a team of four individuals. Uh, we are responsible for more than just revenue. Uh, we're also our media relations, broadcasting, uh, development, fundraising, branding, licensing, you name it, I've made popcorn, I've replaced toilet paper in the bathrooms, as many of you have done as well. So uh, our, our team uh, works very well together in order to try to get, uh, get to the end product. Uh, our programs, uh, today we operate a little bit of everything, radio, uh, television, web streaming. We still do a little bit of print, uh, signage, uh, digital and static, events and experiences social media and web. Uh, pretty much nothing out of the ordinary for anything that any of you guys do as well within your programs. Uh, but uh, I include the Statesman Club piece of this as well. I'm talking pretty much just about sponsorships today. But Jim talked about something earlier this morning I think it's important for us to hear and, and remember. Uh, his energy uh, sponsorship earlier this week, more than likely a philanthropic gift for OKC, more so than an actual sponsorship where the entity is concerned. It's important, especially at our level and where I'm located, oftentimes a lot of my sponsors, they don't have the ability just to whip out their checkbook and write me a check out of Jeff Mason's account. But Jeff Mason Marketing can operate that sponsorship through his business. And so when we take those approach, we take a dualistic approach to it. Uh, if I go in and visit with someone and they're not really interested in the sponsorship side of things, they may be more interested in the Statesman Club. I've often I've got to be willing to pivot. And so it's important for us to always keep those things uh, in mind as we're moving along. So how do we get here? Uh, when I came to Delta State in 2001, I was a non-traditional college student. Uh, I grew up in a family of broadcasters, was lucky enough that uh, from the time I was a child, uh, I like to think of radio as minor league uh, marketing, basically like minor league baseball. Uh, I grew up with a family that uh, from the time I was old enough to understand what sales meant, uh, I was in that mode. Broadcasting uh, opened up a lot of doors for me. I did Alabama baseball, Alabama women's basketball, but uh, didn't have a college education. And thankfully, kind of as Bill did for you, Mal Moore did for me one day at Alabama, said, Matt, you need to go to college. You, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And so I listened to him. I ended up at East Mississippi Community College, uh, was there for two years, and from East Mississippi, ended up at Delta State, where I finished my education, uh, ended up getting a master's degree, met my beautiful wife, that is uh, my reason why for everything in a lot of ways and ultimately uh, got the ball rolling. When I came to Delta State in 01, we're doing $33,000 a year in revenue generation. 33 grand. You can't do a lot with $33,000, especially where we're located. So as we started the process of trying to figure out what was gonna work for us, uh, in order for us to grow any stream, for you to grow any stream, you gotta identify your assets. What have you got? What have you got that works for you? What have you got that is going to have a good return of investment? Um, you got to spend a little money to make a little money. Some of my bosses hate to hear that because I'm always willing to spend money in hopes that I'm going to make money. Occasionally it doesn't work out that way, right? Well, we've all had those experiences. But uh, the way that we've grown our program, and really what I'm doing today is just lifting the hood on what we do at Delta State. I don't have a book that I'm going to sell in the, in the lobby after the event, nothing like that. I'm just giving you kind of a snapshot as to how we've gotten to, to where we are uh, today. Uh, first steps for us were to identify what streams were currently in place. In 01, we had static signage and radio. That was it. All we did. Uh, we broadcasted football, uh, some basketball, 
and baseball. Um, we didn't do softball, we didn't do any of the other sports, which ultimately became a Title IX thing for us, to now we do softball, we do women's soccer, men's soccer, web stream, we do a little bit of everything. But uh, those were the two revenue streams we had. So we took the ground and started trying to build off of that. In 01, I'm going to show you some numbers in a little while, and as Jim said, uh, don't fall in love with numbers, uh, uh, but we tried to find a way to, what can we add? What's going what's to help us grow our revenue stream? So we began with radio, static signage, we made a list of everything that had the most return on investment. Who in here still does traditional broadcasting? Radio station, do you, do you partner with your radio station? you pay the radio station, or does the radio station pay you? I pay. You pay. You buy the time, sell the time, wonderful model. That's what we do as well. Uh, that allowed us, uh, that the traditional broadcasting piece allowed us to start adding some things. I'm going to show you some things that we added here in a moment as we start dealing with some of the, the other revenue streams. The biggest thing that was important for us, nobody in the position that I took over had ever really had an annual view of what they were doing. They never looked at what was, you know, what were you spending? You know, if uh, one of Jim's uh, banners was $110, you know, what are you selling that for? We were tremendously undervaluing what we had to offer. And as we started looking at our packages and looking at things that we could put together, that annual review piece became extremely important for us to be able to identify those areas that we can expand on. Uh, the other piece is that uh, you can't get too emotionally involved with programs that you start. Radio is very important to my heart. But as I continue down the road in this business, I see that radio potentially could become a dying medium for me. Uh, that's tough when you grow up in the business, you love the business, you enjoy the business. So as we put programs in place that are kind of our babies, uh, really important for us not to get too emotionally involved with them because almost again everything has a, a shelf life in, in some shape or form. Uh, this next piece we looked at, what areas are we looking to add? Uh, the list that we had up earlier today, you know, pretty much everything's there. When you're looking at the next wave of sponsorship opportunities, what do you see on the horizon? That's not a rhetorical question. It's Digital? Okay, digital, what else? Uh, still growing social media type stuff. Okay. Web page. Web. Experiential sponsorships. Yeah. Uh, any of you have opportunities to travel with teams for sponsors and things of that nature? Uh, we have an interesting setup in our league. Uh, Florida Tech, which is in JP and Devin's league, has football. But they're an affiliate member of football in, in the Gulf South. So we have to fly to Florida Tech every other year, and we end up using that as a money maker. It's one of our new revenue streams. We allow uh, for the opportunity to sell seats on the plane, kind of experience where you have bed with the team, stay with the team, all those kinds of things. So as we started looking at how to grow uh, what we have, we continued to look at the areas that we wanted to, to, to add. Uh, Again, just because state you has it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Uh, oftentimes, especially in where I was at, they would look at what Mississippi State or what Ole Miss was doing and, and control A, control C, control V, hit the road, see what happens. What kind of return on that do you normally get? Not really well because you can't deliver at that level uh, because of manpower and other issues. So. Uh, we really try to look at things that made sense for who we are, what we are, and the areas that we serve. We have big real estate in our area, big real estate sponsorships, uh, and some other things that, that we'll kind of look at here as an example in a moment. Uh, again, uh, important uh, for you to become like your neighborhood watch. Uh, I like to use that term with my staff often. I want them looking at what all you are doing. I want them to see what other schools are working uh, and what is working for them. Bring those ideas back. Do they fit? Do they not fit? Uh, it doesn't work in my area to try to put on an ESPN3 caliber broadcast. I don't have a broadcasting school. 
I don't have the ability to bring in, because of where I'm located, professional broadcasters and things of that nature. So I'm not yet there able to leverage my ESPN3 web streams and things like that. So that's important to keep in mind as you're building your revenue package and you're building your package uh, for what you're ultimately going to sell. Once you've identified uh, your targets, uh, or once you've identified your core set of assets, uh, it's time to go out and do the work. Uh, two key things for me uh, is, I, I like Jerry Panis's approach. Panis, uh, big fundraiser. Uh, if you've had an opportunity to read his book, Asking, uh, Panis uses a first meeting as just that. It's a visit. Uh, I'm not a believer in going into a business and cold calling, trying to sell. It's all about the relationship. It's all about the opportunity uh, to try to build a connection point between that sponsor and my athletic department. Two of the things that have been successful for us over the long term are those long-term sponsors. Now the university, uh, there was a good question earlier about whether or not you have the ability to just write those contracts, execute those contracts. Your university is going to impact some of your ability to, to raise money, to, to raise revenue, simply by the contracts that they have in place. Uh, for us, uh, pouring rights, different things of that nature, impact some of those relationships that we have and to leverage those vendors. So I try to get to know our vendors and spend some time with them before we ultimately uh, get going. But regardless of whether it's a, a small sign, a big sign, I try to spend a little time with them, uh, getting to know my potential sponsor, getting to know my potential partner, as we refer to them, before we ever uh, get going. Again, it's all about the relationship. The relationship drives uh, your ability to be successful. Peripherals, those kinds of things are important. Uh, I didn't have enough of our Statesman Club brochures for everybody. But there's some here if you want to take them and look at them. Some of our sales material is on the jump drive that uh, Jim has for you. You can look at some of that stuff. Those things are important. The snazzy ad slicks, the donor booklets are nice. Uh, but I like the quote, you don't get milk from a cow by sending it a letter. You actually have to milk it. You can't, you can't send the cow a brochure and expect the cow to send you back a pint of milk. You actually have to go spend some time with it. You have to get to know them. And so the, the approach that we have taken, the approach that has been successful for us, I like to call listener-led uh, listener sales. Uh, our portfolio uh, just pretty similar probably to most of yours. Uh, we took some opportunities to try to find some ways to generate additional revenue. Uh, our season ticket booklets for football and other sports, that's an individual ticket. And so at the back of that ticket, we sold individual sponsorships, uh, whether it's a local restaurant, buy one, get one free kind of thing if they bring their ticket in. Small little ideas to help generate additional monies. Uh, we have a, a rewards app. Many of you uh, may have one of those as well. We drive a lot of revenue through our rewards app by being able to sell touch points uh, with our sponsors. Uh, so as we think about these different products that we put out there, uh, we try to find different ways to leverage them for uh, ultimately our sponsor. We have gotten onto the social side a little bit. Uh, we sell uh, social sponsorships, uh, athletes of the week, web sponsorships, all these different kinds of things as we continue to try to grow uh, our stream. We host a weekly radio show. Uh, we also do a monthly luncheon that we also have sponsored. Uh, I have four uh, corporate sponsors that pay for that, uh, help pay not only the expense for my coaches, uh, but also for the restaurant. It's a, it's a small revenue generator for us, not as big as uh, some other events. Uh, we do host golf tournaments. Uh, uh, we have two a year. One is pretty centrally focused on our football program. The other is more for the university's uh, athletic general fund as a whole. But for us, again, not big revenue generators. What they are are touch point generators. Uh, I don't play. Uh, some of our head coaches do play. My athletic director doesn't play. Our whole job that, that day is to make sure that you have a really good experience, you have an enjoyable experience, but you also get the opportunity to spend a little time with us 
uh, as we try to, to sell you on Delta State and how Delta State ultimately allows uh, you to sell your products. The bottom right hand corner picture is uh, our uh, Christmas social. We have uh, two events a year, our Christmas social being the biggest one where we bring in all of our sponsors. We invite all our donors, all of them. Now the good part is a lot of them are out of town so I don't have a huge food cost where that's concerned, but everybody's invited. So we plan for that usually the good thing is, any overflow we have, that just feeds our teams during the holidays, and so there's not uh, there's not much loss there. So for us, asset management is extremely important. We have a small team of people that operate this, and it's no different for any of you. Uh, it's great to have all these ideas that allow for big, big picture ideas. Uh, we want to have all the in-game promotions we possibly have. Well, if you've got a staff of four people, two of them have to do stats and two of them have to do radio, who's going to do the in-game promotions? You know, those kinds of things. So we were able to, through our revenue that we generate, actually add a few people. We got creative uh, in our staffing piece. But as we were looking at uh, our programs, one of the biggest things that we didn't have in our stadium, our stadium's older, uh, it's functional, we have a great press box, but it has no suites zero sweet income out of that. No chance for renting anything in my press box, nothing. So we got thinking one day, well, how can we create a, how can we create a sweet type atmosphere at our football game? And so we had to put in artificial turf, and for years we had an older uh, former player, one of our biggest donors, one of our biggest sponsors, that wanted to create a berm around our field, kind of bowl it in. To, to try to make it a little more intimate. Uh, Mississippi Delta is flat. When you're in our press box, you can see for as far as you want to see. Uh, it, it's as flat as it can be. So we want to kind of bowl it in, close it in. And so we took the idea of, of his burn piece and we created the levee. We're 15 miles away from the Mississippi Delta, uh, Mississippi River. There's a levee on both sides of that to protect people from flooding. So we created the levee in our north end zone right underneath our uh, football uh, video board, scoreboard, and that became our sweet area. That became the area that it uh, has become a monster revenue generator for us. It's a private event within a public sporting event, if that makes sense. Um, it's a, uh, an opportunity for everyone that comes to the event. It's kind of a tailgate within a game, if you will, and it's become a huge uh, revenue generator for us. The bad side of this, if there is a bad side, a lot of our fans would rather be there than in the stands. So we try to make sure that when we are web streaming everything, we make sure our camera angles are the right way so people uh, believe that we actually have someone uh, in the stands. So building a relationship. Uh, I'm a huge believer in listening. Oftentimes, we go into situations, especially when we're going into sales pitches, and we believe we've just got to, we've got to drive the conversation. Got to throw everything at them as quickly as I can, get to the bottom line, get the signature, and I'm out the door. That hasn't worked for me in my career. Uh, it's been quite the opposite. The opposite for me has been going in and spending time with Jeff or with Brock and those folks and talking about why you like Delta State. Why is Delta State important to you? So for us, uh, we started uh, basically trying to make sure that every time we visit one of our major sponsors, uh, or visit one of our sponsors, period, uh, it's a listening session. Uh, you know, obviously, they know me. I've been at the school long enough that I've got cultural capital with them. Uh, they've had an opportunity to kind of see me grow within the department and I've had the opportunity to uh, either use their products, be a part of uh, their businesses, those kinds of things. So the important piece for us is that conversation about the university. Uh, as Jim pointed out earlier, I'm not going to have 85,000 people in my football game next Thursday night. I'm going to be really happy if I have eight. Really happy. So when I go into Domino's Pizza's national corporate office or go talk to them and they want to start talking numbers, that does nothing for me. 
I can't, I can't get anything out of it. So what has ultimately been successful for us is to listen to what my donors or my sponsors want. What is interesting to you? Well, for us, I've got some examples of how this has worked for us. Domino's Pizza uh, is our largest food sponsor. Uh, began in 08 with a package of between five and ten thousand dollars with us, which is great. It's a nice, nice amount. Uh, but over the course of these last few years, listening to Neil Anderson, our local franchisee, what was it about Delta State other than selling pizzas to our kids that he wanted? And at the end of the day, it kind of became about this. It came about our okra, fighting okra. Anybody know about fighting okra? Some of you do. We have a, an interesting uh, mascot situation in Cleveland. We're officially the statesman and the lady statesman, but our students in the late 80s, early 90s, didn't like the statesman and lady statesman connotation. And so they wanted to come up with a new mascot idea. And they did, the fighting okra. We've been on David Letterman. We're on just about every best top 10 mascot or worst top 10 mascot <laughs> list you can possibly think of. So as Neil's talking to the national office about the fight in Oprah, he starts getting a little traction with their marketing team, gets a little traction with their corporate side. And ultimately, we were able to leverage that into growing our partnership to where it is today. And again, some of you may be able to do numbers way larger than this, but for us, $25,000 to $35,000 in Cleveland, Mississippi, in the heart of the Mississippi Delta, is monstrous. It's a huge opportunity for us. Farm Bureau Insurance, uh, many of your states will have Farm Bureau or something similar. Farm Bureau for us, five years ago, wasn't advertising at all. Uh, we were asking, we are going to see them just couldn't make that, that leverage point sale for them. Uh, uh, finally, we got them in with a small signage package, and then uh, two years ago, we were able to leverage that signage package because of the experiences they had, bringing them to campus, letting them get to know our coaches, letting them get to see our student athletes, seeing the impact of how their money was being used in their sponsorships to improve our student athlete experience. Because at the end of the day, everything that we generate within our, our revenue engine is all put back into the athletic department to try to improve our student athletes' overall experience. Uh, Robinson Electric, uh, Cleveland's an interesting place. Uh, Devin talked about the ones. Uh, I have the, the honor in Cleveland of having Mississippi State University's largest donor. He lives in Cleveland. Uh, in the entire University across the entire country lives in Cleveland, Mississippi. Uh, so th there's old money in Cleveland. There, there, there are a lot of ones in Cleveland. Uh, some of the ones uh, really important to our university uh, and important to our city. All of them are important to us. But the Robinson family, Robinson Electric's been in operation there for years. Uh, it's not a small town company. It's a regional southeastern United States uh, power. And for years, we could not get into, we couldn't make the sale. We, we, we tried, uh, just different reasons didn't work you know, at, at different times. And then finally, ultimately, we're able to, to work up to the point of getting to visit with David, uh, one of the namesakes of the, the company, and we're able to get him involved. Uh, $10,000 package. And the way that we work our packages, and you'll see in our sales stuff, we have basic breakouts. You can do radio, you can do signage, you can do all these different things. But the thing that's worked for us in growing our partnerships has been going in and sitting down with John. And all right, John, what are you interested in? What, what do you like? Well, I'm an old school guy. I like radio. I like print. Okay, well, we'll put you a package together that makes sense for that, and I'll send him the proposal. And I'll either shock him to death with what I send him, and he calls me back, he's like, whoa, it's like 10 times what I was thinking about spending. All right, well, then we can come off that. You can always go down, but once you've got that sale, sometimes it's hard to go up. So uh, yeah, important for us to be able to listen uh, to what you know, they want. Uh, for us, Robinson was very interested in making sure that they were able to see their logos uh, on the video board. 
video board became a, a, a big piece for us, and I'm going to kind of give you some examples of how that grew in a moment. Uh, Wendy's, uh, longtime sponsor for us, local franchisee. Uh, franchisee kind of got disenfranchised, or uh, did, not, not disenfranchised. They, just like, they didn't lose their right to vote. <laughs> they got uh, disinterested in, in you know, advertising in our region for a while. For years, our, our homecoming pep rally was actually at Wendy's, uh, our football homecoming game. We'd do a big pep rally at Wendy's. They'd do a, a frost eating contest, all these different kinds of things. And over the years, uh, right around 2003, uh, they quit doing that. And for the last 12 years, well, I guess, last 16 years, 15 years, uh, every year, hey guys, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Nope, nope, nope. And then finally, I want to think about that again. Just kept wearing on them, kept visiting them, kept seeing them, kept putting in front of them old images of what had worked for them in the past. Pictures of you know, six, 700 of our students <coughs> at their Wendy's franchise, they're not giving away six or seven hundred hamburgers that night. They're giving away free Frosties and a few hamburgers. They're going to make some money that day. Uh, and so finally, we open that door again. We get them back in. And we're able to get them back in at our corporate one level, which is a $30,000 package for us. Uh, they jump right back in, just like it was 2003. Uh, excited uh, to have the partnership. Uh, because we kept working, kept working that. Yes, sir. Does a company like Wendy's, would there be co-op money involved there, or does it all come from the local franchisee? We actually are working with NCIRA, which is their national advertising agency. We coordinate everything through them. I think they work that internally, their co-op money. Uh, many of you probably have co-op sponsorships. They're great on one hand, and you're really bad on another. Uh, because oftentimes you'll see co-op money disappear, and usually when the co-op money disappears, the sponsor disappears, because uh, that's how they're, they're paying for it. Uh, my understanding with our Wendy's partnership, it's a three to one. The franchisee puts in one, uh, Wendy's puts in the other three. Uh, the interesting thing on this, and those of you that are NCAA schools, Wendy's is an official NCAA sponsor, so you may want to try to use that and leverage that a little bit. Uh, in your sponsorship deals. Uh, Canon Motor Company is another example. Canon uh, came into our area uh, relatively new. Uh, we had a couple of long-term uh, car dealerships in our area that have been there for uh, literally 50, 70, 50, 60 years. Canon came in, uh, ultimately put in a new dealership, uh, jumped on board with us, uh, ultimately kind of took over all the business in our area. And once they were at that corporate one level, they had no real reason to spend any more money with us. You know, they're, they're, they're there. But through meetings, through visiting with them, talking with them, well, what are your needs? What are your challenges? How many of you have challenging recruiting budgets? <laughs> that should be the entire room, right? How many of you have no recruiting budget? <laughs> well, that would be a challenge, right? <laughs> All right. So through, through conversations uh, with, with Tyler and the family there, we start looking at other opportunities to leverage our partnerships. And so at, uh, at our university, uh, our foundation, uh, and your foundations, I think, will do this as well, we give them a, a Statesman Club benefit in return for them giving us recruiting cars. Uh, we have four recruiting cars. Uh, a couple of them are assigned to head coaches. And basically what that has allowed us to do is take that recruiting money and spread it out. Instead of us having to uh, rent cars through Enterprise, we don't have a pool system at our university. We used to have pool cars, pool vans. You go rent, a, you, know, you just go check you out a van and those kinds of things. Well, our university went away with that, went strictly to rented vehicles. Uh, and what does that do to your recruiting money? Just kept, kept compounding it down and down and down. So, we were able to leverage that into getting courtesy cars. It's good and bad. It's great from the standpoint that we have four courtesy cars. I need 13. <laughs> and unfortunately, we're not able yet to get the Canon folks to give us 13. Uh, you know, all of our coaches want their own courtesy car. Uh, all of us that are out constantly 
in, in external relations or whatnot. We want our currency cards too, but uh, we haven't been able to get there yet. But simply through spending time with our with our sponsors, getting them to uh, not only have the opportunity to meet our coaches, have our student athletes understand the importance of when schedules come out, schedule cards, schedule posters. We don't take schedule cards and schedule posters out. Our student athletes do. And they do it by teams. Uh, they take them through downtown, through, through our campus, through our community, because what we've found is that that is one of the biggest things that I hear when I go back and see my sponsors. Well, man, I really appreciated women's basketball coming in and bringing their schedule posters in. I enjoyed getting to meet Big Baby or whoever it is that, you know, is on our team. We have a, a young lady on our team that is referred to as Little Bit, and then her counterpart is Big Baby, she's a 6'3 center. That, you know, they, they love getting out in the community, meeting, meeting folks, and that's been big for us. And then lastly, Cleveland State Bank, Cleveland State Bank, you know, obviously Cleveland, Mississippi, Cleveland State Bank's going to be a big piece of that. Uh, they're our longest running sponsor, uh, right at 48 years uh, with the athletic department right now. Over the years, it was just static signage, because that's what banks want, static signage. Well, now banks want to sell their mobile app. They want to sell their online banking. They're in the mortgage game, just like everybody else is now. So sitting and listening to uh, them, hearing what they wanted to ultimately market, ultimately sell, allowed us to grow that revenue stream for us within the athletic department by providing them those platforms that move them from a static signage partner into one of our corporate packages. That includes you know, everything you see there, digital, radio, TV, print, social, uh, <coughs> nine yards. So for us, this is what it looks like. Uh, again, I'm in the Mississippi Delta. If I were in a, a larger area, maybe those numbers would look a little different. But for us, 2001, we're at $33,000. Uh, as of this year, uh, right about 535, 540. My number one statistic in life, uh, outside of marrying my wife, is 1,556.7%. Wow. That's how much I've increased revenue at Delta State since I took over. That's huge for our student athletes, huge for our coaching staff. And the beauty of creating that culture of revenue uh, within our department is our coaches now. When they go out to other places and they see something that they really like, they come back. Sometimes they don't even come back. I've had my baseball coach before text me a picture from the dugout before the game's getting ready to go or right after the game's over. Hey, I saw this today at Columbus State. Or I saw this at Lynn. What do you think? And so we take those and we put them in the hopper. And at the end of the year or in the middle of the year when we meet, uh, we sit down and we try to see, okay, what can we do uh, to maybe take some of those ideas and work them uh, and make the best out of the situation that we can. Uh, these are our main streams. Uh, just a couple of years ago, we started trying to leverage social. Uh, we, we were ahead of the game a little bit, thankfully, uh, because of you know, us being the revenue generators and me also being in charge of media relations, uh, athletic communications, we started doing uh, uh, web videos, social media videos, those kinds of things in 08 and 09. So we've had some traction over the years of being able to show people you know, what we can do with views and those different kinds of things. So uh, we get about $35,000 a year off of that. Uh, $52,000 a year is strictly print, uh, all print advertising of some shape or form, schedule cards, posters. Uh, we no longer print long form programs because nobody needs them. They're all right here. Uh, you know, most of the time, uh, how many of you have printed hundreds of copies of a game program and then on Monday when you're doing your reconciliation, you get your report from your ticket folks, we sold 50 programs, 60 programs. I was losing about $10,000 a year uh, on programs, just off of the print side of things. I was you know, generating enough uh, to cover all of our expenses, and by losing, I'm just referring to that's how much I was losing to, to print them. So we made the decision, let's chop them off. Uh, let's quit, quit doing it. We partnered for several years for football with our local newspaper. Uh, they printed the football uh, program. 
they quit doing that. We went to a bifold uh, program that had the rosters in it, uh, QR code links to everything that you need uh, for live stats, video, those kinds of things. And I still generate several thousand dollars a year off of that small program. We do the same thing for basketball, baseball, softball. Uh, it gives us uh, lots of opportunities for smaller ads, but again, uh, print's one of those areas that just isn't seeing the traction that uh, it once had. 170,000 for us is radio, uh, and then 265 is traditional signage, digital signage. Uh, and for us, if I moved up, well, actually, it's on the slide. Uh, you see a massive jump between 09 and 2013. Uh, thankfully, through the vision of uh, our previous director of athletics, uh, he had the vision to put video boards in. And we wanted to put them in everywhere. But unfortunately, we were only able to put them in uh, in football and baseball. But in 2009, that changed the game for us in terms of what we could do uh, in-game and what we could do uh, from an opportunity standpoint for our sponsorships. Uh, and that changed the game for us forever. So now, what is Matt doing? Matt's trying to figure out a way to put video boards at basketball, at soccer, everywhere he can possibly, everywhere I can possibly put them uh, in order for us to continue to try to, to leverage that. Uh, and for us, again, uh, it's all about listening uh, to what our, our partners want. Uh, for us, again, going back to you know that, that visit, always have a packet, always have something to leave with them, uh, you know, basic information uh, about our programs, what's there. I'll let them chew on this a little bit. Uh, if I come in and see you on a Monday, I'm going to give you a week to think about it, look at it, those kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to send you a note thanking you for the visit. Uh, and then I'm going to follow up with you, go in, listen to you, what you got, you know, what you're interested in. What, what are the things that you know, are attracting you to advertising in the football arena or advertising in basketball? Uh, what other areas do we have? We have a, a national power swimming and diving program. Uh, really uh, phenomenal facility for us. It was opened in 2001. Uh, the interesting thing about our facility is just about every year we host the North Half State uh, High School Swim Championships. There will be a couple of thousand kids and family members in Cleveland to come swim that day. We have an age group program. Our facility is used constantly. Where else do I have a video board other than baseball and softball, uh, baseball and football? So we've got one in the swimming arena, and it is used constantly, constantly. And so trying to think about those ways of uh, finding uh, other revenue generators uh, has been very important for us on the digital side. Uh, and going back to, to uh, uh, our keys to growth, for us it's just consistency uh, and, and transparency. Uh, offering sponsorship opportunities uh, at every price point. Uh, again, leveraging the chance uh, to come alongside the university uh, in its position within the region. Uh, for our local businesses, uh, very important that we have a quality town and gown relationship between the university uh, and our sponsors, uh, getting them to uh, see and understand what our core values are. A lot of them are alums. A lot of them attended the university. A lot of them sent their kids to the university. So they already have that touch point. Uh, but being able to get them to see how our athletic department is a change agent for 400 kids' lives every year. And many of your departments are the same way. But uh, oftentimes at our level, at the smaller college level, uh, without that opportunity to play athletics or without that ability, they may not be in school. Now that may not be the, the case for all of our student athletes, but it's always important for us to, to have that in front of them. Consistency in the relationship. Uh, I try to see our, our advertisers, my list, all four of our guys have a list, but I try to see everyone on my list uh, monthly, uh, pop into them, see them, shoot them an email, text them. They have constant access to me. I, I do our play-by-play -play for football and baseball, and I may be broadcasting the, the football game 
but I'll get bzz, bzz. Hey, Matt, I didn't see my ad run in the first quarter. Well, what is Matt going to do while he's broadcasting the game? He's going to forward that text up to my video board director and make sure that in the second quarter that ad gets run because I don't, you know, you've got to take care of the relationship. But consistency in the relationship, um, listening, listening to what they want, listening to what interests them. Uh, why are they interested in certain programs? And once they're interested in those programs, try to make sure that you keep them in front of them. And then as you're working on new ideas and new things, sliding those into them on a regular basis, getting them to see what's coming down the road. And then lastly, delivering uh, what we promised on and delivering it on time. Uh, deliverables in our market uh, are extremely, extremely important. Uh, I almost lost a sponsor uh, last year because of construction. Uh, we were in the process of building a boulevard around all of our athletic venues, Statesman Boulevard, and instead of a phased building project like we were promised, we got an all at once, hey guys, here we are. And so baseball and football season, we're basically parking on dirt and rocks as they have torn up the roadways around our athletic venues. And at one point last year, toward the end of the, the regular season for baseball, we had one egress in and out of our entire athletic facilities. And all of our athletic facilities, with the exception of basketball and swimming, are in one location. It became a nightmare to get in and out. But we sell sponsorships on, on poles, you know, uh, light pole banners. Couldn't get my bucket truck in to, to, to put the light pole banners up. Couldn't get my bucket truck band, uh, in to fix the ones that were broken. Uh, thankfully, we were able to, to mend that relationship, mend that partnership, keep them on board, but they were upset that their pole banners weren't up. It's not his fault that my roadways tore up. It's fine. I've got to find a way to fix it. And uh, unfortunately, at 30 feet, you can't do that really easily with a ladder, so <laughs> you've got to have a bucket truck. But, but we were able to work through that uh, listen to them, listen to the things that were uh, that they were happy about, things that they weren't, uh, and, and turn it around and, and fix that. And then lastly, uh, transparency and how uh, sponsor and donor dollars are used. Uh, I think oftentimes we don't use our student athletes enough, but use them in the right way. Uh, I'm not talking about taking them alongside when we're trying to go make a sale, those kinds of things. I think that's wrong. I don't like using them in that term, but I do like using them in the sense of how did I use that $35,000 that Wendy's gave me to better their experience at Delta State? How did, over the Thanksgiving holidays that are coming up when my teams are here, but that holiday break is not budgeted within our, our food allowance uh, through our university food partner, well, how am I going to feed them? They're still going to show up at the calf and want to eat. I've got to figure out how to pay for it. That's how we do it. That's how we do these things. How do we offer more programs? Uh, I think also it's important uh, to have coaching visits, uh, have our coaches be a part of this program, their willingness uh, to be a part of uh, the revenue generators. And I think as, you, uh, as, as Devin stated, and again as Jim uh, started us off with this morning, having coaching buy-in is extremely important where this is concerned. Uh, oftentimes, or at least when we got started, uh, it'd be a little pushback, because that's just another thing they've got to do. It's just another thing that they've got on their plate that you know, they already feel like you know, they're, they're underpaid, which they probably are. In our uh, I don't have many $5 million a year coaches. Uh, don't have any. Uh, you know, if I did, I'd probably be at the wrong, you know, wrong place. But uh, you know, they, they just looked at it as another thing they had to do, but as we continually show that as we bring in more revenue, we're improving our student athlete uh, experience. We have more trainers. We have more access to mental health uh, professionals. We have better travel. Uh, we're feeding our kids better. We're outfitting our kids better. And we're able to do all of this because of the revenue program that we have in place. And so, uh, yeah, I move around too much. My apologies. Uh, at, the, at the very end, you can't say thank you enough. I'm a handwritten note guy. Uh, I love sending handwritten notes. Uh, I actually enjoy it. 
uh, I block off two hours on Tuesday, and I turn them out, send them out. Uh, I think that they go a lot farther than a, a form letter. Uh, it certainly has shown uh, the big returns for us, for me. Many of our coaches have gotten on board with this. They do the same thing. They send out a handwritten note uh, because you can't say thank you enough. Uh, and at the end of the day, all of our successes are predicated on the relationships that we build with our partners. Uh, if you're not willing to listen, uh, if you're not willing to, uh, to, to really hear what they're telling you, because your sponsors and your advertisers uh, will tell you what they want. They'll tell you what price point they're really interested in coming in at on your university or with your university. And then it's your job to take that price point and move it up a notch or down a notch, depending on how it works. Uh, but I, I always like more. More is better, right? <laughs> At least that's what we think. But our relationships, again, uh, are, are all it's what it's all about. Keeping your, uh, keeping your name and keeping your relationship in front of your sponsors and your advertisers, extremely important. You can't do that from your office. You can't do that from your cell phone. You have to do that with your feet and with your hands. You've got to get in front of them. Uh, if you're uh, more introverted in nature, it's going to be uh, going to be a little harder for you. Uh, but uh, you can still do it. Uh, you just got to be willing to do it. As Jim said, I am willing to share any little thread of knowledge that I might have up in this ball head of mine uh, at any time. Um, what we do is not any different than, than what any of you guys do, uh, but we do try to keep. Uh, approach to excellence as Devin echoed and what we're we're doing every day. We definitely try to deliver on what we sell and promise and that has helped us uh, ultimately generate the kinds of revenue that we have to operate our department. Now I will say this, how many of you know exactly what your coach's needs are right now? Do you keep a list with you? Started doing that several years ago because I, I got I got kind of blindsided by a question one time at a, at a sponsorship meeting. Uh, you know, normally you're talking about your bigger sports, most of the time, not all the time. But I got blindsided by a question, well, what does your cheer program really need right now? Y'all know what your cheer program needs right now? At the time, I didn't. I sure do now. <laughs> I kept that in my list and in my little portfolio that I carry with me, I have a little written list of what I know my coaches' needs are. I also know what my coaches' wants are. And then I know what my coaches' dreams are. Because every every now and then, every now and then, you do step in that hole that, whoa, this is a lot deeper than I thought it was. I thought this was ten or fifteen thousand dollars. This is fifty or a hundred. And I can do a lot more with that. If I know what to really listen to what that advertiser, sponsor, donor uh, is interested in giving towards. And so I started several years ago keeping the practice and keeping that list with me. I try to keep it in my head as best as I can, but as I get older that becomes harder. Uh, but I keep that list with me at all times uh, because it does help when you get in those situations where someone wants to talk about a program that maybe isn't one of your normal sales pitches or approaches. So. Questions for Matt? I get one, Matt. With regard to your Corporate One and Corporate Two sponsorship levels, how customizable are they? Um, or is there pretty, uh, you know, you get A, B, C, and D, or do you get one from column A, two from B, three from C? How do you, do you, do you like Legos? Uh, anybody that knows me or follows me, I tell you about Legos all the time. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very heavily involved in uh, uh, my church and uh, different things. And, and I'm a reason I'm, I'm getting your answer here for a second. Our programs are like Lego blocks. Any of you that have had kids, you pop the lid off, you dump them out on the floor. If I can piece it together however I can, kind of going back to Paul's quote at the beginning of the morning, I'm going to put it together for you however, and however I can. Uh, our corporate one includes everything. Uh, there are some opportunities within that to switch it around. You may not be interested in radio at all. 
And so we may be able to you know, work the, the video board piece a little more on this side, or may not be interested in the print piece, but you want to be in that, that level for whatever reason. You know, we're completely able to customize those things, move them around like you would Lego pieces, uh, and put it together for, for our sponsors and our advertisers. <laughs> Well, Matt, you talked about this, the, the listening-led approach, which I, I find that phenomenal. Talk about the Wendy's process, because I imagine you're dealing with more of a national group. Mm -hmm. How did you get them to come back? Well, for us, it was, you know, Wendy's was always there. You know, it, uh, the, the family that owns that, that, that franchise owns tons of them in, in the Mississippi region that we're located in. And for whatever reason, it just kind of drifted away from the advertising model. But it was important for us to keep to try to keep in front of them as much as we could, uh, and for us, you know, just continual conversation. Even though that conversation may not ultimately have led us to any kind of relationship, and so when uh, they struck their deal with the NCAA with National Wendy's, uh, I think that kind of got the weeds rolling on on the, on the smaller level or the local level. Uh, but that staying in front of them constantly, talking to them constantly, was able to take that and then, okay, man, appreciate you staying with us. Now I want you to talk to Megan out here in California. And you know, once that conversation got rolling, you know, what can we do? You know, our Wendy's deal is the is arguably the toughest deal I've ever dealt with. Uh, Tough from the standpoint of uh, they're obviously very demanding in what they want. Their expectations are extremely high, but they also look at things from different metrics than what most of your sponsors or advertisers are going to look at. They want touch points. They don't want numbers in, in, a, in a venue. They don't want to see number of videos seen. They want to be able to come in and say, hey, Jeff, here's a free hamper. And so for us, it was leveraging the access at events, leveraging the opportunity for them to get in uh, and actually drive their mobile. Y'all may not know this, Wendy's actually has a car that will make Frosties. Jeez. They do. It'll make Frosties. Uh, they want to be able to drive their Frosty car up to my football games. They want to drive it to our basketball games. They wanted to be able to uh, not only leverage product, but Wendy's is also very culturally and socially engaged. Uh, the adopted child program, very near and dear uh, to their founder's heart. And so they even wanted events where they could bring in children from adopted families and showcase that piece for them as well. So uh, and this is where understanding your university, understanding your region, understanding who you serve is important because in our area, extreme low adoption rates. There are tons of kids in the system. Uh, you know, that was important for them as part of their package with our athletic department to be able to put that visually out there to try to help drive it within, within the region. And I found that fascinating that as their national marketing and advertising team is looking at Little Cleveland, Mississippi, and then looking at their social programs within their, within their larger corporate structure still being able to operate those or promote those within our sponsorship package. It wasn't all about Frosties and hamburgers uh, with our students, which was huge. Well, let's yeah. give Matt a round of applause. Yeah. I think Devin has touched on this and Matt has touched on it and the underlying, what keeps coming back to me are relationships. Obviously, relationships are easier with consistency when you've been someplace for as many years as Matt has been, and you can grow that relationship. But what gets lost in sales so many times is we really just want the money. I don't want to invest the time and effort to get to know you and care about you and figure out what it is that drives you, that you really want to sell pizzas or you really want to interact with my students who might be employees of yours in the future. And so uh, we're gonna be together a day and a half and it's gonna become a little bit of a grind and there's your mind is kinda gonna be swimming. But at least for me in this first sort of start, that's what I'm reminded of. 
that you have that opportunity with your staff. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I don't know that I always see them as brothers and sisters, although my sister was a real pain in the butt, so <laughs> maybe I do. But I, I just, that sort of resonates for me right now as I'm thinking about it, that relationships, if you'll take the time to invest, it, it's not going to pay you immediately, always. Uh, but that's what makes the difference. So we're about to go to lunch, but before we go to lunch, we've just uh, had, and it looked to me like the live video worked just wonderfully. Uh, and so we're gonna hear from the guys who made that possible. I'm gonna introduce Mark Krug from uh, Blue Frame Technology. He's gonna share a little bit with you, and then we're gonna head to lunch. Thanks, Mark. Let's give Mark a walk. So, uh, my name is Mark Cruz with Blue Frame Technology. Uh, Josh Braun's with me as well. Uh, a lot of you in the room have, have, have probably heard from us. We have some of our clients here. And uh, touching on the, on the relationship standpoint, we have really grown over the last three years because of the relationships that we have. Uh, a lot of the referrals that we get uh, for new clients come from, from you guys. And so we really thank you uh, for supporting us in, in, in that fashion. Um, we've grown from um, just about 100 clients back in 2015, uh, heading into the 1819 uh, academic year. We're at over uh, 600 clients, uh, primarily within the college space. We really serve the Division II, NAI, Division III, junior college market very well when it comes to video <laughs> streaming. And our services is the full end-to-end -end product, meaning that we give you the tools uh, to broadcast your events uh, on your campus in a very professional and high value way. And that goes from a software program that can uh, do up to four cameras, instant replay, uh, insert uh, sponsorship uh, advertising and things like that, all the way to delivering that broadcast to your fans. And we can help you do that to web viewing, mobile viewing, and now the new buzzwords, uh, OTT, which is Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, getting that full digital footprint for your uh, teams, your student athletes, and the brand of your college. So we would love to talk to you. Um, even if you're one of our clients, we definitely want to check in with you. Uh, but if you uh, are, are new to video streaming or wanting to get um, a better product out to your, to your fan base, to your community, we can help you do that. Um, one big stat I want to throw out to you. Um, a lot of revenue generation topics today, which has been fascinating for me. Um, we have over 100,000 broadcasts uh, in our system right now. And the data that we have on that tells us that even if it's only 100 people watching or 5,000 people watching, the average viewer for this content that you guys create is 45 minutes. You have an engaged audience that is sitting there uh, that has an attachment to your school and to your student athletes. So when you're going out there trying to get better sponsorships, that's a, that's a big number. These people are sitting there and, and, and watching your content. So just something to think about. But we'll be, uh, we'll be here the next two days. Very glad to be here, and thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Okay, so lunch is right next door, same place that we had breakfast. Um, and then the first session after lunch will remain in that room. So you can leave your stuff here. We're going to be back in here at right at, I think, 2 o'clock.